I'm John Fenzel. We're here just on the outskirts of Carrington in Normandy, France, right between Omaha and Utah beaches. This town, Carrington, was a major strategic objective for the Allies because it offered direct access to the port and to the sea. The German commander ordered that this town be held to the very last man. Eisenhower also directed that Carrington be taken whatever the cost, and it was a very heavy cost. He ordered that all forces be marshaled in order to be able to take control of Carrington. That task fell to the 327th Glider Infantry Regiment. On the 10th of June, Lieutenant Colonel Robert Cole of the 502nd 3rd Battalion Parachute Infantry Regiment led his troops across the Dove Bridge and found it damaged and unable to cross. He assigned engineers the task of repairing it, but they immediately came under fire from a German 88mm gun. Cole sent his intelligence officer with a patrol across the river in a small boat. They made their way across the bridge, which they found blocked by a Belgian gate. The patrol was able to push that obstacle through about 18 inches so one man at a time could be able to get through. Very quickly, that patrol came under flare illumination and then mortar and machine gun fire, and eventually they returned back at 5.30 when the attack was postponed. Most of the fires appeared to be coming from a farmhouse and a hedgerow on higher ground about 250 yards to the right of the highway beyond the bridge. The 327th Glider Infantry Regiment's 1st and 2nd Battalions crossed the Dove River during the early morning hours of the 10th of June. 1st Battalion received friendly fire casualties from the U.S. mortars while they were crossing in a rubber boat. Some units were able to wade across the river. After reaching the far end of the bank in the early daylight hours, 327th Glider Infantry Regiment then swung south. 1st Battalion attacked the south side of the Assigny Highway and 2nd Battalion was on the north side with Company G, 2nd Battalion in the lead. They received extremely heavy casualties as they approached the town of Carrington. Moving single file down the causeway and advancing slowly, crouching, sometimes crawling, all the way, that 400-man battalion reached the bridge at around 4 o'clock in the afternoon with most of the bridge past number three. Now under artillery and mortar fire and then sniper and machine gun fires, they got within range. Casualties amongst the 3rd Battalion of the 502nd became extremely heavy. The casualties continued late into the night. At around 11.30 at night, two low-flying German Stukas strafed the causeway, killing 30 men and knocked out one company completely out of battle. The 327th didn't encounter serious opposition at all until it approached the bridges over the canal east of Carrington at 6 o'clock in the evening. It went into the attack with two battalions online and by midnight held the east bank. The Dove Bridge was still not repaired by noon. The paratroopers improvised a footbridge and began their attack shortly after 1 o'clock. The casualties suffered by 3rd Battalion of the 502nd were severe and were estimated at around 67% of their original strength. The soldiers of the 101st nicknamed this area right here Purple Heart Lane. Finally, on the night of the 11th of June, two of Cole's companies were able to advance on both sides of the highway by 4 o'clock. The German fire had subsided. Company H had crept through the opening of the obstacle and when it didn't suffer any of the casualties, by 4 o'clock in the morning, Company G and the headquarters company were able to follow, taking cover on both sides of that highway. Scouts reached the main farmhouse in the very early morning when they were cut down by German fire. Colonel Cole immediately called for artillery support and then the German fire was able to subside. At 6.15, using a smoke screen for concealment, Cole ordered his executive officer, Major John Stopka, to pass word to the battalion that would have to charge the German positions to eliminate them. He gave the order to fix bayonets. 
Cole led that bayonet charge, overwhelming the defenders in savage close hand-to-hand -hand combat. At first, only a small portion of the battalion, about 20 men, charged, but Stopka quickly followed with 50 more. The attack was effective in motivating other paratroopers who saw what was going on. They joined the attack and they overran the empty farmhouse. Men of Company H found many of the German paratroopers had dug in along the hedgerow behind it. So two companies, H and G, killed them with hand grenades and bayonets, but at a very, very severe cost. But for that action, for that bayonet charge, Cole was later awarded the Medal of Honor. Survivors of 3rd Battalion of the 502nd set up defensive positions and requested 1st Battalion of the 502nd to continue on the attack. Colonel Patrick Cassidy's battalion also took serious casualties from mortar fire and they could only strengthen Colonel Cole's defensive line, taking up positions from the 3rd Battalion command post in the farmhouse to the highway. After a negotiated two-hour truce at midday to remove casualties, Company C of the 502nd moved forward from bridge number four into a cabbage patch between the second and third hedgerows. Fighting at the cabbage patch during that afternoon often took place at extremely close range with contending forces on both sides of the same hedgerow. Except for that truce, the American forces repelled repeated attacks. The final one nearly succeeded in overwhelming the 3rd Battalion at around 6.30 in the evening, gaining all but the final hedgerow between it and the Dove River. However, Colonel Cole's artillery officer was able to overcome jamming of his radio and he called down a concentration of artillery fire so close that several Americans were also killed. The overwhelming violence of that five-minute barrage rolled back the last German counterattack.